Aloha, and welcome to Stand the Energy Man on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm Rachel James from the Hawaii Center for Advanced Transportation Technologies, where hydrogen is really a gas. Okay, so we all like hydrogen at HCAT, but it's not the only thing we know. So today, we're spreading our wings and talking to Eric Kwam, Director of the Renewable Energy Action Coalition, to talk about the thinking that goes behind planning energy projects. Eric, welcome. Thank you very much, Rachel. It's a great pleasure to be here. So I'm super excited about energy action and coalitioning. That's something that is really kind of a hot topic and present, um, well, today. Yes. <laughs> Lots of coalition building um, up to today. That's but true. But particular to energy, can you share a little bit about what the energy, and I'm probably going to get the name wrong, so if you could, oh, you could correct uh, well, me. It's called Renewable Energy Action Coalition of okay. Hawaii, or okay. REACH for REACH. short. I'll go with REACH. And it's a trade association. Its members are renewable energy companies. Mm -hmm. And through REACH, basically those companies have a voice in the uh, legislative process okay. uh, and also in the regulatory process, okay. uh, dockets of the Public Utilities Commission. And the way that I got into this was through my own experience as a renewable project developer, solar PV projects. Okay. And through that, I became interested in policy in the very first docket that I was in uh, through my company was the net energy metering docket, and now mm -hmm. I've been in about, I don't know, maybe 12 or 15 dockets, including okay. the major ones that are going on right now. Okay. Things like power supply improvement plans, mm -hmm. uh, the distributed energy res resources docket, and others. Okay. So I was going to do a deep dive into what does it mean to be in a docket. We might revisit that, though. Okay. So if we could just talk a little bit about who you are and how you establish REACH and kind of sure. why do you do what you do? Oh, thank you very much. Um, well, uh, I'm an attorney. I've been an attorney for 30 years. And before we started, we were talking a little bit that you're in law school right yes. now. And uh, as an attorney, I uh, started out as a tax lawyer. I still mm -hmm. am a tax lawyer. Okay. And being a tax lawyer, I also got involved in transactions, specifically equipment lease transactions. Mm. Equipment lease transactions are actually very similar to power purchase agreements. Oh, okay. Okay. And when I, so when I came to Hawaii, and I'd been in, interested in renewable energy before coming here, mm. I was very influenced by a book by a man named Paul Hawken called Natural Capitalism. Yeah. And he advocated uh, a services approach to thinking about energy mm -hmm. and other other services. And uh, I really liked that. In fact, it, uh, at the time I read it, right at the time I read it, I became aware of the business plan for the company that later became Sun Edison, which became the leading you know, uh, uh, business using power purchase agreements mm -hmm. in renewable energy. So I moved to Hawaii in 2003. And after being here a couple of years, I was looking around saying, you know, this is a really good place to do solar mm. photovoltaics. Mm -hmm. And so I launched my company called Zero Emissions at that time okay. uh, and pursued that for some years. And now I'm practicing law under Hawaii Energy Law Services. Mm. Uh, but really, shortly after I launched my company, Zero Emissions, I was interested in, well, what's the big picture? Because, of mm. course, I had great ambitions yeah. for my for my company. And that's what got me into first the net energy metering docket and then all the dockets that oh, followed. I see. So at this point, what I've been making the focus of my work for the last few years, last four years really, has been focusing on uh, the electric utilities planning process. Mm. And I had a, uh, a role in uh, talking with people at the Hawaiian Electric Utility Companies mm -hmm. about the merits of a goal of 100% renewable energy. So that's a conversation that I started with the Hawaiian Electric Companies mm -hmm. four years ago, mm -hmm. which was about three years, well, maybe two and a half years before that consensus by the companies helped the legislature create mm -hmm. the renewable portfolio standard. I see. So the seed planting, it seems. There was a lot of seed planting there, yes. Very nice. So you also mentioned the in the docket again, and I'm going to dig a little deeper into that because I find that um, PUC, the Public mm -hmm. Utilities Commission, that comes up often. Right. Um, but people discuss their understanding of it differently. Right. And so what does, if I could do just a quick educational on the PUC and what they do, and then when you say in the docket, 
what do you mean? So as an oh. intervener, are you like what? How are you engaging? Well, uh, our electric utilities they're they're regulated by the Public Utilities mm -hmm. Commission. For the Hawaiian Electric companies, which are investor-owned utilities, that means primarily that they regulate the return that. Uh, the utility gets on its mm -hmm. investment in the electric grid mm -hmm. and that's called so they get a regulated rate of return and the bargain is that effectively they have a franchise monopoly on the transmission and distribution of electricity mm -hmm. and that's why their return is regulated mm -hmm. uh, as overseers of the investor owned utility uh, so they're interested in all major decisions that are made by the utility, including the future of the grid right. um, and, uh, you know, what kind of grid do we want? Mm -hmm. What kind of grid does, is Hawaiian Electric planning for? Mm -hmm. What kind of grid do the people at the utility want? Mm -hmm. Okay. And so that becomes the topic of what I call the planning dockets. Okay. And the major ones are the power supply improvement planning docket, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, distributed energy resources docket, there's a, an important pilot program demand response docket, mm -hmm. and there's going to be another major docket um, that's going to be called the grid modernization docket. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of planning work. It's, yeah. These are very, very comprehensive planning efforts being made by Hawaiian Electric Companies in response to the directions from the Public Utilities Commission to come up with plans. And so as you engage in these dockets, um, and I'm sorry if I'm sure. tiptoeing through this, but right. just so that everybody's on the same page, mm -hmm. um, as you engage in these dockets, do you generally provide input on behalf of those affiliates in reach or just from a planning perspective or does it depend on the docket? Like how are you engaging with providing information in that space? Uh, what I try to do is um, think about the issue from uh, the utility's point of view hmm. be, and recognizing that they are, de they are the decision makers for right. what renewable energy options get implemented. And uh, my belief is that when the utility has a planning process that yields what I call consensus decisions hmm. to implement renewable energy options that deliver optimal benefits for their customers. Hmm. When they have that kind of a planning process, a planning process that says, we want this option, we want this option, we want this option in this order, mm -hmm. and here's why we want them. We've carefully evaluated mm -hmm. each of those options. We've carefully evaluated the options that we haven't included in the plan, mm -hmm. and these are the why we want the ones that we I do. See. When you have that kind of a planning process, then those of us in the renewable energy industry, mm -hmm. then we can understand oh, why those options have been selected. Then we can have a conversation with Hawaiian Electric mm -hmm. on, have you considered this assumption? Mm -hmm. Have you considered this particular combination of renewable energy options? Mm -hmm. And we can arrive at, at consensus together you know, between the renewable energy industry mm -hmm. and the Hawaiian Electric companies that, uh, that yes, we want to see these options implemented. Mm -hmm. And that's progress. That's how, that's how, my belief, we can get to 100% renewable energy. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii. People expect. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's a few things in there that I'd like to tease out. Sure. Um, in mentioning that Hawaii, well, well, we know that we have a 2045 100% renewable energy mandate. Mm -hmm. And so as the utility plans to progress mm -hmm. in these different stages of reaching these increasing percentages, right. um, you mentioned that HECO mm -hmm. is essentially the decision maker. So I'm curious, right. um, particularly in respect to distributed energy resources, mm -hmm as those will likely take shape in different communities throughout the islands, right. what engagement do community members have or businesses that are outside of kind of the regular framework of mm. energy planning? Mm. Okay, that's a really good question. Um, well, right now the mode of participation is through the uh, 
the dockets that are before the Public Utilities Commission. Uh, in those dockets, uh, ratepayers, customers, mm -hmm. the general public is represented by the consumer advocate. Right. Uh, that doesn't mean that interested citizens can't submit their own letters and things. Mm -hmm. And if they make a case for why they might actually be participants mm -hmm. in the docket, they can pursue that too. In fact, one of the recent dockets, uh, I think one of the, the demand response docket, there were some individuals, uh, mm -hmm. I think a person who had a PhD, and this is his thing, and, mm -hmm. and that person got into the docket. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, that's generally how the public in, in general participates. Mm -hmm. uh, other participants in the docket include uh, trade associations like my own, okay. representing renewable energy companies. Right. Uh, there are also, uh, I suppose you call them, well, not-for-profit organizations that have a focus on energy. And the two principal ones are Blue Planet Foundation right. and Ulupono Initiative. Mm -hmm. And also, I shouldn't leave out Life of the Land as well. Okay. So, uh, and so they bring their own perspective. They make an investment mm -hmm. in uh, studying it and coming up with policy solutions mm -hmm. that they think will help the most the movement towards 100% renewable energy. Okay, so it sounds like the planning process. And correct me if I'm wrong, but is it less focus on the technologies and more systems and how they serve individuals? Mm, well. Uh, yeah, the planning process. Uh, there are two planning processes. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's the planning process used in the to create the power supply improvement plans, mm -hmm. and then there's the utility's actual planning process. I see. Okay, and the utility uh, utility's actual planning process uh, does focus on the technologies, mm -hmm. uh, and in my most recent report. Uh, which I call Hawaii DR report, mm -hmm. I talk about where the utility is at in their planning mm -hmm. for the major categories of what are called DER uh, technologies or options. Okay. DER stands for Distributed Energy Resources. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm trying to characterize it for people in the industry. Here's where they're actually at. The, the planning process used for the PSIPs Mm. That's more of a visionary thing, mm -hmm. where this is where we s see ourselves going, where we might want to go. Mm -hmm. um, but what matters, and I, this is what I assert, mm. is that what matters is decisions to implement options, right? Okay. Because if you've got a vision, that's mm -hmm. great, okay? Mm -hmm. that's, that's part of it. Um, ultimately, we want to see decisions, more and better decisions, to actually implement the options. I see. That's what's going to get us to 100% renewable energy. Okay. And so, uh, really what utility resource planning is, mm -hmm. and this is all just electric power, we can talk about transportation perhaps in a little bit. Um, what utility resource planning is, it's a decision-making process, okay. right? And the end result of it is, is what I call a consensus decision to implement a renewable energy option. And the way you get a consensus decision to implement a renewable energy option mm -hmm. is if you have consensus starting among the people at Hawaiian Electric mm -hmm. that we want this option because mm -hmm. we've evaluated it, mm -hmm. evaluated it in comparison with all the other options available to us, mm -hmm. and we're sure we want it. Now you've got the basis for implementing it. Okay. okay. You've got the confidence to implement it. And so that's what I spend a lot of my time talking with about with people at Hawaiian Electric, that kind of a planning process so that they're making more and better mm -hmm. decisions, transparent decisions where everyone understands, you know, the basis of their decision and, and we can have a conversation about it. We can actually be helpful to them in their decision making. Hmm. This strikes me as a smart goal planning process. Um, and I don't know if I'm probably really simplifying what you're saying, and forgive me for, for dumbing it down so much, but um, it, it sounds like you're having discussions, um, broad discussions about how to identify goals, but making sure that the goals you identify are realizable. Right. Okay. It, well, well, what I call it, first of all, I call it, I call it a planning process oriented to a goal of 100% renewable energy. Mm -hmm. And 
and then I say, you know, there's a saying, and you'll see this in business management uh, studies. It's called, begin with the end in mind. I'm going to give a pause just there. We'll begin with the end in mind. When we come back, we'll take a short break and return to our audience with the rest of that capture statement. Thank you. Aloha, I'm Carl Campagna. I hope you please visit us this summer. It's a wonderful summer. It's actually a cooler summer than we're used to. But I hope that you come back and visit us and watch our show, Education, Movers, Shakers, and Reformers, here on Think Tech Hawaii. It's at noon every Wednesday. See you then. Hi, I'm Marianne Sasaki from Life in the Law on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm delighted to tell everybody, I'm so excited, I'm going to Washington to march with women on Saturday, January 21st. It's going to be a huge, huge event. And I think we're doing something in Hawaii too, aren't we? Yes, we are. Here on Oahu, we're going to be at the Capitol uh, starting at 8 a.m. Oh, no! I'm certain you are on the edge of your seats, wondering how you begin with the end in mind. So thanks for hanging on. We're back with our guest, Eric Klom, and he was sharing with us how to begin with the end in mind. So please right. continue, Eric. Thank well, you. So, so you, you were speaking, Rachel, about a goal. Mm -hmm. okay? And what, the, what we have is a goal. There's consensus mm -hmm. among everyone that I know of. The mm -hmm. legislature, the PUC, yes. the renewable energy industry, the electric utilities themselves, mm -hmm. that this is what we want. That's our goal. Right. And so the question, I call that a shift in the conversation because okay. once there's consensus and clarity mm -hmm. on that, yes. the conversation shifts to how do we do it? Right. And so for the last year and a half, we've been still at the very first step of that how conversation. Mm -hmm. and. I call that the, uh, uh, the conversation about what kind of planning process do we use to create a plan to get there? Mm -hmm. Because you need, you know, I would assert in my papers that uh, before you can have consensus on the options to get there, on mm -hmm. implementing the options to get there, you have to have consensus on a plan for those options. Okay. And before you have consensus on the plan, you need consensus on how to make a plan. Okay. In other words, you know, uh, how are we, you know, what benefits are we evaluating, are we valuing these renewable energy options for? I see. Okay. Look at any given option. Mm -hmm. What are its effects on the performance of the grid? What are its economic benefits relative to its economic costs. Hmm. For renewable energy options, one measures benefits in terms of avoided costs. Okay. The fu fossil fuel you don't have to burn, right. the fossil fuel burning facility that you don't have to build. Uh, other important options, very importantly, are the energy security benefits hmm. and the environmental preservation benefits okay. of getting to 100% renewable energy. They need to be valued too. Hmm. And so, at that, so we're in this how process. We're really very much at the beginning of it where there's a lot of confusion mm -hmm. about how do you make a plan to mm -hmm. get there. And so when I talk about begin with the end in mind, we've got the goal, okay? Mm -hmm. But the goal or the end result of the planning process, the end in mind, mm -hmm. I would say is a consensus decision to implement mm -hmm. a renewable energy option. Okay. Okay. So, how do you create a process, the end result of which is a consensus decision to implement okay. a renewable energy option? And I address that in my new report series, Hawaii DER report. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I'm going to be doing a longer uh, brief on that actually as part of the reaches uh, submission in the piece at docket. Oh, I see. Okay. So it strikes me as making sure that you're choosing the right tool for the job. Would that be 
kind of what you're talking about? Well, it's when you have, con you see, when you have, it, it's about the consensus decision. Mm -hmm. Because if people are in consensus that, mm -hmm. yeah, this is going, this option, mm -hmm. okay, the next one we do is going to move us the furthest towards 100% renewable energy mm -hmm. at the lowest cost and the greatest economic benefit. Mm -hmm. It works with the grid. It either maintains or improves the performance of the grid. Mm -hmm. It aids in our compliance with environmental laws. Mm -hmm. And overall, it presents, it has resiliency benefits mm -hmm. in terms of avoided other avoided risks. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Okay, then there's no resistance to doing it. There's confidence that, that this is the, the next thing to do, and you've modeled it properly, mm -hmm. and then you find out. Okay, but the main thing is that a decision is made to implement it. It gets implemented. I see. Okay, uh, it's not a pilot program just to test and find out. Right. And there are ways to, to, to mitigate the risks of the first implemented options. Mm -hmm. And then you see. Oh, you know, we chose demand response, for example, mm -hmm. as our as the thing that we think we the utility engineers, the people that are making the decisions, mm -hmm. is going to give us the greatest benefits and the lowest costs. Mm -hmm. And then we implement it, and our model said it's going to turn out this way. Well, it might turn out better. Mm -hmm. Okay, it might turn out not so good. Mm -hmm. Then you adjust. So the in what I. Uh, suggest, invite the utility to consider is that the solution to getting to 100% renewable energy mm -hmm. is not in a plan, okay? Mm -hmm. The solution is in consensus on the planning process, a planning process in which the options are evaluated for those benefits I mentioned mm -hmm. in a way they can be compared and then from your evaluations you compose your plan to get there and then you focus on the immediate options that show up in your in your comparison in your systematic evaluation as being um, uh, offering the greatest benefits and therefore giving you the confidence mm. to implement them and we're on our way I so see. you know it's kind of a virtuous cycle where people uh, see the results mm. from those options mm -hmm. and it's like that worked out great right Let's do more of this, yeah. okay? Let's get even better at our planning. Let's deepen the conversation with the renewable energy industry, mm. and let's get there faster. Okay. Let's get there faster. Interesting. Yeah. So as that planning process applies to renewable energy, mm -hmm. um, can we broaden the discussion a bit into how renewable energy and transportation could be planned? Would right. you say that it would follow a similar? Right, well, that's why I think, yeah. It, it, uh, the, um, uh, you see, for renewable energy for electricity, mm -hmm. uh, we're much further along. And mm -hmm. I would suggest the reason we're much further along is that we have consensus on the goal of 100% right. renewable energy for electricity. Mm -hmm. And that uh, consensus was a little easier to obtain because the central decision maker for mm -hmm. electricity are the electric utilities. Right. For transportation, it's it's more complex to get that consensus mm -hmm. because most of the entities uh, that are decision makers in this are utilities are decision makers in that process, mm -hmm. uh, public agencies are decision makers in that process, and also you have a market. Yes. You have a market, Act, private enterprises in the market and their customers, mm -hmm. right? The manufacturers of electric vehicles mm -hmm. and the customers for electric vehicles, mm -hmm. right? They are all decision makers in this. So the question is, is how do you get that kind of alignment and consensus among such a diverse yes. body of decision makers mm -hmm. on the goal of 100% renewable energy for transportation? Mm -hmm. And I have my own thoughts about that, which I haven't yet expressed in the report, okay. um, but I intend to. And my initial thought about that is that uh, that perhaps the, the proper body to cohere that mm. kind of consensus building would mm -hmm. be our Department of Business, Economic Development, and, and Tourism. Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, and, you know, that might be an appropriate mm. place for them to, to participate because, after all, we're talking about the, the marketplace. Mm -hmm. We're talking about uh, the suppliers and the customers and, and users of renewable energy options for transportation. Mm. And... Uh, 
you know, that they might have the capabilities to do the planning. What I talked about before, that systematic evaluation of options, mm -hmm. which would be a guide to uh, uh, providers of those options and also mm -hmm. customers about which options might the market uh, uh, be most likely to adopt, to, to favor, to mm -hmm. be most commercially viable. So in my mind, business development, that's very much a function of what DBED might do. Interesting. My own thought. That's just my thought, thinking about it right now. No, that's, we're here to hear your thoughts, yeah. actually. So I appreciate you sharing that, particularly since it's not out for public consumption just yet. So thanks for giving us a preview. You're welcome. Um, so as we near the end of our show, I wondered if you had any closing thoughts that you wanted to share with our audience or just any lasting ideas that you'd like people to ponder over the weekend. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Uh, the um, Again, it's... Uh, it, it's an exciting time, and before we started the show, I mentioned that uh, I was just at the legislature on Wednesday for mm, opening day, right. and I ran into at least six relatively young people, mm -hmm. okay, fresh out of university or, mm -hmm. or even grad school. They were there at the legislature, and they're excited, okay. They want to be part of this. Mm -hmm. They want to. They want to see things happen. They want to see. And the way that that they'll maintain their excitement was, is when they see things being implemented. Mm. Okay, decisions being made and progress being made. Yes. I mean, everyone who who doesn't want to be part of that. Right. And so, what I would say to them and other people. Again, mm. we're talking about the the STEM area of mm -hmm. education. Uh, is that the uh, uh, it's going to get really exciting here. It's going to get really exciting. And generally, is that the obstacles to getting there, mm. it's not for lack of, lack of good options. It's not for lack of economic options. Mm. It's not for lack of public support and willingness to do this. It's really just a matter of clarity of thinking, especially about the planning process. Okay. So. And, and being clear on what the decision-making process is that yields consensus decisions to implement renewable energy options. Because when we have that kind of a planning process, things are going to accelerate, and it's going to be very exciting. Excellent. Okay. Well, these are exciting times, okay. and we hope to accelerate into 2017. Audience, thanks for taking your time with us today here on Stand the Energy Man on Think Tech Hawaii. Thank you, Eric, for joining us. You're very welcome. Aloha.